Hey, are you interested in learning how to buy stocks? Well, here's a video on everything you're gonna need to know. The first step that you need to do is set up an investment account. Now, if you have a checking and savings account at any standard bank, you'll be able to set up an investment account there. If you don't wanna do that, you can also use any of the platforms that I've listed here below. My personal favorite is the one at the bottom. It's called eToro. It's kind of like a social network where you can basically follow and track other traders. So really great, but you can use any of these and apply it to all of the same trading strategies. So set up your account. It's probably gonna take you a day or two to set this up and apply. So that is definitely the first step. After that, let's talk about a little bit why we're gonna do this. So what is a stock? Well, a stock is ownership in a company and it is the right to the profits or the dividends from that company. It also has a couple other rights such as being able to vote on the board of directors and the strategy of the company. Now, this is what the Starbucks um, stock looks like. As you can see, it has a unique number. It basically just says Starbucks Corporation and it's a little piece of paper that says you own one share of Starbucks. Nowadays, everything's pretty much digital, however, when you incorporate a company and when you buy shares, you can get a paper copy of your purchase and of your stock. Now, why do you wanna own it? Well, there's two main reasons you would wanna own stock. Number one is because it could be worth more in the future, and number two is because it could pay you money over time. I'm gonna break, through, break down both of these right now. So what makes it worth more? Well, the company could be making more money, making the stock worth more. The second thing is it could own more assets. If you buy a building and you buy property, you buy equipment, those are assets that the company can then sell, therefore making it more valuable. And the third way is better market conditions. If it, for instance, all of a sudden the market conditions around your business change and they give you a better opportunity to make money or buy more assets, then all of a sudden your stock price can change. A great example of this, is Zoom video conference. As you can see at the beginning of 2020, this company was worth under $70 per share. That's what this line here represents and the price is on the right side there. Over time, from the beginning of 2020 to the end of June here, we've gone through COVID and Zoom has become extremely popular. Therefore, the market conditions have changed around this company and the stock price is now $248 per share, meaning you would have over tripled your return on this stock, made over a 300% return. And if you put $100,000 in, you would have had over $320,000 now. So really amazing return and a great example of a company that is worth more now than it was a couple of months ago because of the change in market conditions and an opportunity to make more money. Now, how would your stock pay you? This is the second reason you may wanna own a stock and, and you may be wondering, how is that stock gonna pay me? And well, it's through dividends. Dividends are quarterly payments of profits. So as that company makes money throughout the year, every three months they will say, okay, we make this much and we're gonna pay this much back to our shareholders. That is called a dividend and that is how you can create residual, consistent and steady income and cash flow for yourself to live off of or build up for retirement and continue to grow your portfolio. It's completely based off the number of shares. So if a company pays a $1 dividend per share, you will get $1 per year or per dividend per quarter, depending on how it's set up. So one example of this is Bank of Montreal. If you look here, I have this green little circle here circled around forward dividend and yield. What this means is that this company is gonna pay $3.03 every single year, basically moving forward as a dividend to its shareholders. Now the price of the share is $51.52. This was taken on June 26, 2020. And so therefore, if you had bought one share at $51.52, you will receive a dividend that is forecasted to be $3.03 .03 every single year. And we expect that to go up over time. Now, as an example here, if you had $2 million and you invested that into this basically stock and it gave you a 5.5% dividend, so slightly lower than what we just looked at, a little bit more conservative, it would give you a nice round number of $110,000 worth of income. Now, after tax, I put, I put in a little bit calculator here just so we can see what that looks like. Now, after tax, you're gonna come home with $103,000 worth of income every single year based on quarterly dividends that you have to do absolutely zero work for. All you have to do is hold those shares and those payments will come in every single quarter. Now, if we look at this and we compare it to other different forms of income, this is where it gets really interesting and this is why you may wanna own stocks. So. If you make $110,000 through dividends, you will walk away with $103,000 and you'll pay about a 6.11% tax rate. If you make your money, the same $110,000 through capital gains, such as buying low and selling high, like the case with Zoom, 
For instance, if you made $110,000 worth of profit on a trade that involved Zoom, that would be considered capital gains, and you would walk away with $99,000. So slightly more than the dividends, a little bit different tax bracket here, but here's the real kicker is both of these, you're paying under 10% in taxes and you're doing absolutely nothing except buying and holding these shares and then selling them at a profit later on. If you were to work and create a salary for yourself and get a job that paid you $110,000 a year, you would only walk away with $79,718 because you would pay $30,000 in tax or an average tax rate of over 27%. Meaning, if you work really, really hard for your money and go to work every single day and go create a salary, you're gonna pay more taxes than if you had just collected dividends or traded Zoom and made a bunch of money on it. That is absolutely crazy, but that is the world that we live in and that is why you want to be an investor, a stock trader, and you want to own shares that are going to create you money instead of going out and getting a salary or an hourly job to provide you an income. You want to be able to create that financial freedom to help yourself and generate an income, save the taxes, and build wealth for you and your family. That's the goal here and that's why this matters. So buying stocks, really simple, five-step process. Um, we've already covered one of them basically by setting up your account, really easy to do. Now I'm gonna walk you through the next couple steps. Number one is set your goals. You need to figure out why you wanna get into this, why you're gonna buy stocks and what you're gonna do with them. So your goal could be set up for retirement. You could be trying to buy and hold these shares till you retire and have a nice little nest egg ready to go. You could also be doing it for cash flow. Let's say you have 10, 20, 50, $100,000. You can invest it into dividend paying stocks. And you can generate cash flow for yourself on a monthly basis. If you invest in three different companies that pay quarterly dividends all on different months, you can set yourself up to receive a monthly check to basically provide yourself with cash flow and cover all of your expenses. The third option could be for capital gains. You could be day trading or swing trading, trying to buy low and sell high using a variety of different strategies, some of which we're gonna cover in this video and some later on, but there's lots of different opportunities there. Or you could be just trying to save some money for your family, trying to save it for the next big expense, the big house, the soccer team, whatever it is, you need to set your goal and, and say that's your mission. If it's retirement and you're gonna buy and hold, then don't even consider selling anytime soon. If you're gonna go for cash flow, focus on dividend stocks, and you really need to figure out what your goal is so that you can basically match your strategy to that goal. Secondly is time horizon. This is a big one, especially when it comes to stocks because timing is so important. There's a couple different options with regards to time horizon. The way I like to think about it is a day trader is somebody that buys and sells within the same day. It means you're getting in early, you're selling a little bit later, and you're trying to scalp a couple of percent in between. A swing trader is somebody that buys Zoom in January and sells it in June or buys it for, and holds it for a couple of weeks, even as short as a couple of days. But what you're looking for is that swing where it goes from low to high or high to low and you're trying to capitalize on that price movement, but you are not planning on holding it for years and years and you're also not planning to buy and sell within the same day. I consider that a swing trader. The third time horizon that you should look at is being an investor. An investor is something that's going to hold for a long time period. This is somebody like Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, any of these guys that are going to buy the shares and hold it for years and try and develop a portfolio that's going to give them a consistent return and a great retirement later on or use that money to buy a house or make a major purchase. Those are investors that are looking for value, that are looking for stocks to buy and hold that are going to appreciate over time or generate cash flow through dividends that they can add back into their portfolio. So what you need to do is think about what's your time horizon? Do you wanna get into this and learn how to day trade? Do you wanna learn how to swing trade? Or do you wanna try and build a long-term portfolio and build some wealth? Really up to you. Third thing, find your company. So you've already established your goal, you've got your timeline, now it's time to actually make that investment. The way you do this is you start with the big picture. Start with what country you wanna invest in. I'm in Canada, I do a lot of Canadian investing, I also do a lot of US investing. I don't do a ton of overseas because it's just out of my ballpark and out of my knowledge. If you're in the UK or you're in Asia or you're in India, start investing in maybe your own country or something that you're familiar with. But that's the number one thing is choose the country that you wanna invest in first, then choose the sector. For this example, we're gonna use Apple and Microsoft. So our country would be the United States, the sector would be either um, basically technology, that's what we'd be looking at here. And then find an industry inside of that. 
Here we're looking at personal computers and basically personal computing devices and then compare your companies. So we started big, we started with the country, we broke it down into the sector, I'm looking at technology, I'm looking at personal computing, and then I'm gonna find the two or three best companies in that sector and figure out which one I want to invest in. So in this example, we're gonna look at Apple and Microsoft and we're gonna compare these companies using two different strategies. The first one is by looking at the financials. Now this is really simple. You can go to yahoofinance.com and you can find all this information by just typing in the company name and looking up their statistics. It goes through the financial statements of that company and gives you all the statistics that you might wanna see in order to compare them. I've broken it down here and basically just summarized that information for us. So I'm comparing Apple on the left here and Microsoft on the right, and I'm looking at four different financial metrics that we're gonna to use to compare these companies. So on the left-hand side here, these, these are the metrics I'm using. The, okay, so the first metric that we're gonna look at is price to sales. Now, price refers to the price of the entire company or the value of the entire company divided by the sales of the entire company. So what we're looking for is a lower value, meaning that we're getting better value for the sales. So when we look at Apple, it's 5.85 compared to Microsoft at 10.85. Now, what this is saying is that when we buy Apple shares, we're getting much more sales volume per share than we are compared to Microsoft. Microsoft, we're getting basically half as much compared to Apple. The second value we're look, gonna look at is price to earnings. So what this is, is the price or the value of the company, the exact same thing, divided by the earnings. So this is how much the company actually makes. Now, if we look at this, we can see Apple is 24.36, meaning that it's takes 24.36 times its earnings to get to the value of the company. With Microsoft, it's 31.9, almost 32 times its earnings to get to the value of the company. So for instance, the idea here is, if the company gave back 100% of its earnings to its shareholders in the form of a dividend, it would take 24.36 years to get back the entire value of that share or that investment. With Microsoft, it takes even longer. So in this metric, Apple is clearly the winner. The next ratio we're gonna look at is the current ratio. Now this is how much cash the company has compared to how much cash the company owes. Basically, it's how good are they in their cash position? Do they have enough money to keep going? And when we look at Apple, it's 1.5 compared to Microsoft of 2.9. So clearly, Microsoft has much more cash than Apple does. However, they're both well above that one ratio, that one. So for instance, if they were below one, it would mean they have less cash than current liabilities, or meaning that they owe more money than they actually have. Both of these companies are above that one number, so that's really important, and 1.5 is a pretty safe current ratio for Apple. So it doesn't worry me at all. Microsoft did beat it on this ratio, but as long as Apple is above that 1.2, 1.3 kind of mark, I'm not even concerned about it. And when we look at the dividend yield, this is how much profit the company is giving back to its shareholders. Both of them are right around that 1%, so they pretty much tie here. So when we look at the financials of Apple versus Microsoft, what comes to mind for me is we're getting much better value when we buy Apple compared to Microsoft, both in terms of sales and in terms of earnings. And their current ratios are both above 1.4, one, 1 one of them's 1.5. So I'm not concerned with the current ratios at all, especially with some new products coming out for Apple. So as of right now, I like Apple the best based on the financials. The next method we are going to use to compare these stocks is what I call a perfect chart. It's from stockcharts.com. I can show you exactly how to get this in some of the later videos, but basically what it's doing is it's comparing Apple and Microsoft over the last 365 days. So if both stocks started at zero 365 days ago, or if you had just bought both stocks 365 days ago, how well would you have done? That's what this chart is showing. And so if we look at Apple in red compared to Microsoft in blue, we can see that Apple has done tremendously better than Microsoft has. So if you bought Apple a year ago, you would have made over 130% on it. If you bought Microsoft a year ago, you would have made about 90% on it. Now, both of those are phenomenal returns. However, we can see that Apple has clearly given a much better return to investors than Microsoft is. So that is just a little bit of information that we can pull from the charts. You can definitely dive in more to this, but that was just a quick glance at it. So. When we compare these companies, we can see that financially, Apple is much better, has much better performance. And on the charts, we can see that Apple also gives a much better return to investors. So for me, I'm gonna be buying Apple and I'm gonna show you exactly how to buy these shares coming up.
Okay, so the fourth thing that we want to do is actually make the trade. Now that you have your account signed up with either your bank or Quest Trade or eToro or one of the platforms, the next step is to make the trade. So these are some of the definitions that you're going to need to know. And I'm about to exit my screen and go right into my bank system so that I can walk you through all of these. Okay, so I'm in my bank. First thing I'm going to do is just log in and get to my direct investing page. Oh, wrong password. There we go. So I use RBC. I'm in Calgary, Alberta, Canada right now. So RBC is definitely a big bank here. Um, okay, so I'm in my investing. I go choose my account. I use my margin account. And right now I'm doing phenomenally well in this account. Uh, so as you can see, I've got Air Canada right here. We're up 21,000%. That's because I invested into Air Canada and then I actually took out my original position. That's why my book cost is negative 15. And then I also own Shopify and we're up $11,000 or 113% on this one. So doing really well on this, but it's time to buy a share. So I am looking for Apple. So all I'm gonna do is type in the ticker AAPL, that's the Apple ticker. I'm gonna click on this and then we can see the exact stock price and go through everything here. So it's what it's gonna bring up is basically my stock quote. It's gonna give me the price of the share, a little bit of information about it and, and how it did today. So today, Apple is $361 US, is up $8.15 or 2.3%. Good day for Apple. Okay, so I'm gonna buy about a $5,000 position. So all I'm gonna do is go 5,000 divided by 361 equals 14, roughly 14. So I'm gonna click on buy and then we're gonna buy 14 shares of Apple right now. So I'm gonna go from my margin account right here, we're gonna buy it and we're gonna buy 14 shares. Here's the symbol or the ticker AAPL. I'm buying it on the US market, not the Canadian market. And I'm gonna place a market price order. Now what market price means is it's just gonna execute my trade at the best possible price. It means it's gonna execute it automatically very fast at the best price I can possibly get. The other option here is a limit order. Now a limit order is gives you the ability to only get in at a certain price. So today Apple was $360 or whatever it was, $361. If I placed a limit order, I could place it at $360 so that the only way my trade executes is if that stock drops below $360, then it will execute my trade. So for me, I'm gonna get into Apple and I'm gonna hold it for a little while, so I'm gonna place a market price order. If I was very specific and I was day trading or swing trading, I might place a limit order so that I could control very precisely what level I get into the stock at. Now I'm gonna keep it on a market price, so it gives me that basically quick entry. It gives me the best price possible at a very specific and quick time. I'm gonna leave it open for the day and I'm gonna leave it for any part. Special instructions just means any part so that if I wanted to sell it all together, somebody would have to be on the other side of that trade to execute all 14 shares. If I click on any part, I can execute one, two, three, four trades all the way to the 14 shares, and then I can get in and out as fast as I can. So I'm gonna choose any part, I'm gonna click on continue, and then I'm gonna basically confirm my trade, and we will have bought our shares. So confirm right here. I'm gonna go through this, I gotta confirm it one more time, and then it will basically give me this confirmation page. So there's the green little letter, and as you can see, I made a buy action of 14 shares for Apple. The description is Apple Inc. I bought it on the US market at market price, it's open for the day, any part, I paid $9.95 in commission, and the total cost of my transaction was about $5,087 for 14 shares of Apple. So really simple, I just bought that, it's gonna execute this order, and by tomorrow morning, Apple will be sitting in my portfolio, and so now I've just bought those shares. The last thing that I wanna talk to you about, though, is right here. Okay, so we just made the trade. I talked about the ticker, the market, and everything else on here. The last step is to hedge the risk. Now, what I mean by this is you just made a trade. And we bought Apple, but if Apple goes down tomorrow, there's, there's some risk there. There's some volatility, and I could lose a substantial amount of money. Now, some of the ways that you can stop that or limit your risk is by hedging it. That's what hedging means is just limiting your risk. And there's a few different strategies you can use in order to achieve that. Number one is a stop loss. A stop loss is another trade at a lower price to get you out of that trade. So for instance, we bought at $361. We bought 14 shares of Apple at 361. If I'm wrong on this trade and Apple goes down over time, I don't wanna lose 30, 40, 50%. I only wanna lose 5%. So if I'm wrong, I wanna be able to get out of it right away. 
So you can provide and you can enter into a stop loss. A stop loss limits your risk by executing another trade at a lower price. So I can implement a stop loss by placing another order to sell the exact same amount of Apple shares, 14 Apple shares at $355. That way, tomorrow morning, I will own Apple at $361. And if that stock starts to drop and it starts to drop heavily, I will get out of it at $355. So if it continues to fall 20, 30, 40% because COVID just goes crazy tomorrow, I will have limited my downside risk to only that $6 per share. I will have lost 70, 75, $80 on a $5,000 investment because I limited my risk by implementing a stop loss and only putting it in at 355 so that if I'm wrong on this trade, that's all the money I lose. There's other options to limit your risk as well. You can buy an opposing industry. For instance, if you're buying oil and gas stock that is highly susceptible to the price of a barrel, well, if the price of a barrel falls and that oil and gas stock is clearly the value of that is going to fall, well, there are other industries that are going to benefit benefit from that, such as the airlines. So if you go out and you buy an oil and gas stock and the oil and gas price starts to fall, well, these airline industries are likely gonna make more and more money because they'll save money on fuel. Therefore, you can hedge your risk in your oil and gas bet by buying the airline. So that's just one more example of how you can hedge your risk. Now, the last thing I wanna talk to you about is learning how to trade, because it's a really important thing here. There's two basically types of research you can do. One is technical, and that's looking at the charts, and the second one is fundamental, and that's looking at the financials. We looked at one example of both of those today, but there's tons of more strategies that you can use to figure out what's the best company to invest in, when is the best time to invest in that company, and when you should you get out to take the most profits. But the big thing here is you need to understand how the markets work. You need to understand what risks you're taking and how to manage them. The worst thing you could do is realize that, oh crap, I made a bad trade and I've lost more money than I was expecting. It gives you a gut-wrenching feeling in your stomach and it's so hard to climb back out of that, both mentally, mentally and financially. So what we've done is we've started to create a basically a resource for you and we call it Stock Market Fundamentals. What it is, is over seven hours of instructional video designed to help you learn how the stock market works, how it started, how it's structured, and how to actually properly trade the market as a beginner, we teach you everything you need to know from the basics of making the trade, how to analyze multiple different companies using several different strategies, how to put together a chart list so that you can keep track of the companies that you're watching and how to properly execute the trades to maximize your profit. So we put all this together into a video series. It's over seven hours long. It has over 50 lessons in it, touching on all the different topics you will want to know about it. And it is the complete stock market training guide. We've had over 4,000 students already enter through it and we have plenty of reviews and over a 95% basically five-star rating. So we're super excited about that. Not only that, but it's all me. It's completely me, exactly like what you've just seen in this video. I'm going to walk you through all of the PowerPoints, everything, the same structure as what you just saw. And I'm going to walk you through four different live trades. I actually buy the shares with my own money. I sell the shares with my own money and I show you the actual results. One of them I made over 200% on and I'm going to break it all down for you with show you exactly how I did it. And I really want you to join me because this is the ultimate guide for how to learn how to trade the stock market. So a couple other things you're going to get with this is lifetime access to all the videos and all the PowerPoints. So it's a resource book that you can actually keep and take with you and study over time. You're also going to get my personal contact information. So if you have any questions, I'm here to help you out. I have a team with me ready to go and private Facebook group. So this is something that I just started. It's a private Facebook group for anybody that actually goes through the entire course and says, yeah, this was valuable. I send you an invite and it's for anybody else in the same situation to post comments, post threads, ask questions and build a little bit of a community around people actually interested in the stock market. So if you're interested in any of that, please remember to check out the links below, sign up for one of the lessons coming up and I would love to have you there. I wanna give away as much of this information as I can. So please take a look below. I really appreciate it. And I hope you learned something from this video. Thank you.